last year. She amazed her family. But now... Mom, my science project is due tomorrow. Jeremy hates me. When chaos strikes... Mom, I want to play Xbox. No, it's my turn. Her true powers will be revealed. Hey, honey, your mom said she's going to stop by later. Is that okay? Mommy, 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 mommy. What? Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. Exactly. I'm packing. Nelly, what did you do? How did she know? Gifted by God with the power to read minds. I don't have any homework. No. I mean, I did all my homework. No. Well, I did some of it. No. Fine, I haven't started yet. There's the truth. The wisdom to restore peace. He said, that's it. We're finished. So sick of this texting. What? Let me see that. Uh, wait. This says sick of this testing, not texting. Oh, right. He was taking the ACT. Thanks, Mom. The insight to see the future. I forgot to think of a science project. Yeah, I thought you might. Yes! With a verse of unlimited capacity. <laughs> and her secret weapon, the look. These abilities combine to form the ultimate example of warmth, tenderness, and dignity. Mother's Day. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, how many of us have a mom who couldn't get our name right on the first try, if, if ever? Uh, all right. So. My, my mom told me when I, when I was younger and all my brothers and sisters ha had already left home, I was the last of seven. And she had said that her goal, her mission as a mother was to get all of us out of the house without anyone getting pregnant or thrown in jail. Mom didn't have real high standards, you see. With, with, with the seven people God had blessed her with, that was about all she could ask for. And she said it with such pride and joy on her face. Uh, she, she had succeeded as far as she knew. But now her, her goal has changed a little bit. Because now there's grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Now her mission is to see to it that every one of them is coming with her to heaven. That's a little bit more noble, a little bit loftier of a goal. She wants every child of hers and every child of God to be there when she's there, to celebrate together forever in eternity. But you know, it, it, every kid reaches a point in life where mom can't be their missionary anymore, can she? 
Because you can't force your child into a relationship with Jesus Christ. and You can't drag them into heaven with you. So what is a mother to do? She prays. For every one of her kids, every one of her grandkids, every one of her great-grandkids, every day by name, she prays. When, when you get there, and you get to see Jesus Christ, and, and he is the focal point, the centerpiece, the, the absolute joy of heaven in, in, in himself. But you got someone else that you're looking forward to see. Someone, someone's already there, and man, is that going to be awesome when you get to see him again? It, having Jesus there is enough. That's everything. But boy, having the rest of my family, the rest of the people I love there, that's in no small part what heaven is. Heaven is a family reunion. Don't you love family reunions? In our family, we're, you know, so many of us are so spread out from coast to coast. It doesn't happen very often. But boy, when we get together, uh, that is just a joyous time. Well, this is what's waiting for us in the Father's house. John chapter 14, this is the night before Jesus will be crucified, where Jesus will die for the sins of the world, for your sins and for my sins. This is the last lesson, the last lecture. And he talks about heaven and how to get there. And in verses 2 and 3 of John chapter 14, in my Father's house are many rooms. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Those of us in big families think about that. In my father's house are many rooms. I get a room of my own for once. But he's got a place for us. And this place, it, it lasts forever. It's ours. There's, there's one word, I think, that, that captures the essence of what heaven, heaven's family reunion is going to be like, and it's the word together. When we get there to this place, he says, where Jesus is, that's heaven. Wherever Jesus is, is heaven. We're going to be together with Jesus. And not just believing that Jesus is there, not just hoping that Jesus is there, wishing that Jesus is there, but seeing Jesus there. On this side of eternity, this is what faith is. We trust in God. We trust in God's Son. We believe that Jesus is always with us because He is, and He has promised to do so. Let me ask you, is Jesus here today? Is Jesus in the room? Yeah. Where is He? Well, what chair is He? I got a light in my eyes. Is He, like, you know, Back corner, maybe? Is, there, is, is that him back there? Well, yeah, it kind of doesn't work quite that way, right? But we believe it to be true. In heaven, we know it to be true. There's no need for faith in heaven because it's all reality. It's all present experience. We will know fully that Jesus is ours and we are his and we get to spend forever with Jesus, together with him. But it's not just Jesus in heaven. We will also be together with our fellow believers, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. The saints is how the Bible refers to them. The saints, that's how God refers to you and me even right now. And, and that word saint, that doesn't mean that you and I are perfect. It doesn't mean that we are holier than everybody else. The word saint comes from the word sanctify, which means to be made holy. And we are made holy only and entirely through the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross that washes away all our sins. And God has so removed our sins from us, they are as far as the east is from the west. That's where our holiness is. Not in how great we are, but in how great Jesus is. And those are the people we get to share the Father's house with, those believers in Jesus Christ. 
And this togetherness with Jesus and with the saints, with the believers, it lasts forever. Forever. Nothing in the created world lasts forever. Everything has a shelf life. Everything has an expiration date, including us. But in the Father's house, in eternity, with Jesus, nothing breaks down, nothing wears out. Nobody gets sick and nobody dies. Nobody leaves. That family reunion never ends. It's not like Jesus thinks it's getting late and all right, you people better, better head on out and go home. We are home. And he's never going to end the party for us. That celebration of the glory and the grace and the power of God with all those who have gone before us and all those who are coming after us who know that Jesus the Son of God is their Savior. So in John 14, that's the place. Now Jesus is going to tell them and tell us how to get there. In verse 4, you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas, never at a loss for a dumb question, said, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Thomas wants to plug it into his GPS, you see, so that he doesn't make a wrong turn. He's looking for directions. But then Jesus drops it on him. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Because you see, Jesus is the way. Not a way. Not one way among many ways. He's the only one. In our world today, people don't like that because we, uh, we live in a world that, that uses buzzwords like inclusion and tolerance and that sort of thing. And who are you to judge? Uh, I don't do the judging, but Jesus does. God does. And God, when he built his house and when Jesus prepared a place for us, he made only one entrance, one pathway, one road into the Father's house and into our relationship with God. There are not multiple routes. There are not multiple doors. But in our world today, you see, we don't, we don't like to be exclusive or anything like that. So we want everybody to be there uh, even if they hate Jesus, even if they reject him, well, let's just grant them a special exemption. So there's a Muslim way and a Buddhist way and all that kind of thing. Which runs totally contrary to everything God says in Scripture. In Acts chapter 4, there is salvation found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name Jesus. Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 10, everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Because you see, all those other religions are man-made and every single one of them denies Jesus Christ. He's not the Son of God. He's not the Savior of the world. And by the way, he was not resurrected from the dead to open up the door to heaven for us. Other than that, he's fine. Those are the other world religions. They reject God by rejecting his son. So do you think he's just going to turn around and say, oh, that doesn't matter. Satan loves for us to think so. If Satan can convince us, oh, that doesn't matter what you believe, that doesn't matter how you feel about Jesus Christ, you see what he's doing to us who do believe in him? He's shutting us up. Because if just everyone goes to heaven no matter what, as long as they're sincere or as long as they're good people, then we don't have to tell anybody about Jesus, do we? We don't have to share the gospel. We don't have to share the love of God given in his one and only son expressed for us on the cross. 
We don't have to say anything because, hey, everybody goes. Boy, that would make it easy. If only it were true. If you were to come and tell me, Pastor Steve, you know, I love you, I love what you're doing here, I, you know, I love everything uh, about you, but I can't stand your son Andy. I hate him. How do you suppose I'm going to react to you? Every mom in the business knows when that boy breaks up with her daughter, he's broken up with mom. Or when, when her boy is being bullied at school, she's being bullied. So no, there, there are not multiple ways, there are not multiple saviors, there are not multiple religions that all lead to the same God new. No. Jesus is the way. Lots of religious folks will invoke the name Jesus. They'll include Jesus in their teaching. They'll talk about Jesus because they know that, well, that sounds right to the couple of billion people around the world who actually do believe in Jesus Christ. But God warns us about that too. Isaiah chapter 29. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Jesus himself invokes that verse in Matthew 15. They talk a good game. They talk about me, but they don't know me, and they certainly don't believe in me. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, and everyone who believes comes to the Father through him. Jesus is your ticket in. Bought and paid for with his own blood so that you and I would not be disqualified from heaven by our sin or our weakness or our doubts or our misgivings. But we are welcomed in entirely, totally and eternally and unconditionally by the grace of God, the love of God in his son Jesus Christ. He's the ticket in. And once we're in, he's also the master of ceremonies. Just as he is the Lord of our life, he is the Lord of our eternal life. The centerpiece of all that is heaven. That you may be with me where I am. And he's the life of the party. He's the reason we rejoice in this life. And he will be the reason we celebrate in the next life. And you know, a lot of folks wonder, what are we going to do in heaven? And the Bible really doesn't spell out all the details. You know, do you want, do you want a golf in heaven? Well, I don't know if there's golf in heaven. But if there isn't, it's still going to be heaven and Jesus is still going to be there and it's going to last forever with a joy unlike any you and I have ever met on the golf course. I do not go golfing to discover joy, by the way. I go golfing to discover the beauty of God's created world, nature, like trees and sand and water. But not joy. So what are we going to do there? I don't know, maybe God, maybe God has a sport, a game, we've never even thought of. And it's going to be way cooler than that and a lot more fun and we just can't get enough of it. The thing is, Jesus prepares a place for you. He comes back, I'm going to take you to be with me. So you will be where I am. That's what we need. That's all we need to know. Not everyone that has ever lived, that has ever been born, not everyone's going to make it in. And it should not be enough for us, for you and for me. It should not be enough. It should never be enough that I'm going. That I'm going in. That I've got the ticket. I know the master of ceremonies and he is the life of my party. I not only want to get there, but I want to take as many people with me as I can. Even if I'm the last one in, sitting in the, the nosebleed seats up somewhere, 
if all of you went in right ahead of me, then that's a successful life as far as I'm concerned. That's what, that's what mom wants, and grandma, and great grandma. Not everyone goes. Do you remember, maybe you've seen a Disney movie a little while back called All Dogs Go to Heaven? You seen that? Just the title alone, when it first came out many years ago, got pastors' lips wagging. It doesn't take much for pastors to get their lips going, but this one did it. All dogs go to heaven. And, you know, is that true? Because you know what question comes next out of this, right? Do any dogs go to heaven? Will my dog be there in heaven? Because I loved my dog. Well, a lot of us, when we were growing up, you know, we had Sunday school teachers and pastors tell us, no, animals don't have souls, and so they don't go to heaven with us. Well, it's true that they don't have souls, and Jesus died for us, for uh, his sons and daughters, for us human beings. But to say there are no animals in heaven, you can't, you can't make a biblical case for that. There are animals in heaven. Scripture is quite clear on that. Describes that, that day of the Lord, that, that eternal life, as you know, the lion laying down next to the lamb. Horses in Revelation. So why not dogs? Now, I can't say, my, my yellow lab Otis died about five years ago. I loved that dog, and he loved me. He was, he was my dog. I mean, he was the whole family's dog, but he was my dog. Dog people, you know what I'm saying. Now, I can't say, Otis is going to come up to me when I walk in the door. You know how yellow labs greet you when you walk in the door? Any door? Even if you just stepped out into the garage for five seconds? Okay. I don't know that Otis is going to be there, but I've got this feeling that God has a whole heaven full of yellow labs. And all of them, like yellow labs, they got that, that vicious tail of death wagging behind them. I learned with Otis, you know, with the coffee table, don't you dare put coffee on it. <laughs> and with a little practice, I finally learned I don't have to dust that thing anymore either. I just let his tail do it. So some yellow labs, or a bunch of yellow labs, are going to come up to me when I walk in the Father's house. I'm going to pick one of them out, start calling him Otis, and he's not going to know the difference, and I'm going to have my dog for the rest of heaven. I don't know about all dogs, but I want you to think of it this way. In our confirmation program here at Shepherd of the Hills, we refer to the middle schoolers as the shepherd's dogs, and we're not insulting the kids, we're not calling them names. But dogs, D-O-G, stands for disciples of God. If that's what we're talking about, then yes, all dogs go to heaven. All disciples of God go to heaven. All followers, believers in Jesus Christ. Yes, all of them go to heaven. 